Blue hour is the time of day right before the sun rises and right after it sets, when the entire scene is painted with a cool blue cast. It's iconic in film and really in visual art as a whole because it serves as a blank canvas for lighting and can easily masquerade as nighttime. It also just looks really cool. couple things to get out of the way up front. Blue hour is not an hour, it's more like 15 or 20 minutes. And you might hear it referred to as dawn or dusk or magic hour. I call it blue hour. Anyway, there are a few different reasons that you might want to shoot a scene during blue hour. Probably the most obvious is if a scene takes place during nighttime. Actual nighttime is like completely dark and it's almost always too dark to get good footage and see any of the scene. So blue hour is a nice alternative. There's enough light to still shoot and it, you know, looks like nighttime. Blue hour also feels very cold. It works very well with winter footage or any kind of footage that you want to convey freezing temperatures. And finally, blue hour can convey emotion for your story, like darkness or unease or melancholy depending on your story and the context of it. There's a lot of reasons you might wanna shoot during blue hour, but it gets dicey when you move on to the how to shoot during blue hour. There's a lot of little tricks and gimmicks that make it a very tricky time of day to shoot. So let's move into why those are and how you can mitigate the danger. First and foremost, planning is essential. As we mentioned before, blue hour is more like blue 15 minutes. It's very fast, very short, and constantly changing, so there is no time to waste. Do your research. Know when blue hour is going to be so you can be on time and ready to go when the time comes. And also have everything ready to go. Have your gear set up before that blue hour actually sets in. Have your shot list ready to go. Make sure everyone else you're working with is prepared. You don't want to be rehearsing right before the shot. Go ahead and rehearse beforehand, before blue hour actually starts, so that when that blue cast rolls in and you have those that 15 minute window to get the shot, you can just go. Every time I shoot a scene during blue hour, we show up at least an hour or so early so that we can run through the specifics of the scene, what shots we need to get before blue hour actually happens. Moving on, let's talk a little bit about gear beginning with cameras. One really helpful feature to look for in a camera if you're shooting during blue hour is a dual native ISO. In short, native ISO is the ISO at which you get the best looking image with the least amount of grain and artifacts. And a dual native ISO means that your camera has two native ISOs. So you can have a lower one when you have plenty of light and a higher one when you're in those low light situations. It's a helpful feature that lets you boost up your ISO when you don't have much light to work with and brighten the image in camera without introducing grain. And of course, just better low light performance with less noticeable grain and artifacts is always going to be helpful when you're shooting in these dark blue hour conditions. Personally, I shoot just about everything on the Panasonic Lumix S5. It has a dual native ISO at 640 and 4000, so I usually keep it at 640, and then when I'm shooting during blue hour and it's darker, I can punch up to 4000, get several more stops of light in the image, without introducing any additional grain. And as for general low light performance, it doesn't stack up to like Sony or anything, but still perfectly good. As for lenses, it's really helpful to have a wider, larger aperture. So something like f1.4 or 1.8, as opposed to like an f4. Personally, I use a kit of three Sigma art lenses, the 14 millimeter f1.8, the 35 millimeter f1.4, and the 85 millimeter f1.4. All three of these lenses have a nice wide aperture like f1.8 or f1.4, so I don't have to boost up the ISO too much to get plenty of light when shooting during blue hour. It can also be really helpful to carry some additional lights to add into the scene and add some more interest. I carry a LumeCube Panel Pro and a LumeCube Panel Mini 
in my camera bag whenever I'm gonna be shooting in those dark blue hour conditions, but there are plenty of other perfectly good alternatives like Godox light tubes or NAN light tubes, or I think Aperture has some nice small light panels. Small portable lights or practicals that you can easily hide away in a scene, they can be really fun for shooting during blue hour, but we'll talk more about that later on. To clarify, the gear shouldn't be a barrier to shooting during this time of day. Like, I don't want you to think you need to go out and buy a new camera and lens in order to shoot during blue hour. No, these are just helpful, important features to pay attention to when you are buying a new camera or a new lens and to make note of if you already have them. Honestly, as far as gear goes, I think the most important thing is just to pick one setup, one camera and lens and stick to it. The reason being blue hour is so short and moves so quickly that there just isn't time to be swapping out lenses or taking the camera on and off of a gimbal. That being said, let's move on from gear and talk about how to expose your footage because the harsh reality is blue hour is pretty dark and this is a tough pill to swallow. It's tough for me too, but there's a really good chance that you're gonna have to take your ISO into the danger zone. When it's dark, underexposing isn't gonna save your footage because you'll still have to brighten it up in post and all of that grain will come right back out when you do that. So you might as well do it in camera. I know that's a complete mood killer though. So let's move on and talk about adding lights. This is the fun part. I mentioned before that Blue Hour is kind of like a blank canvas for lighting. Everything's in shadow. It's very soft and evenly lit. All has the same color of light. And if you add your own little bits of lighting in there to add some interest, God, it just looks so good. It's a cinematography gimmick and it's one that I am happy to fall back on any day. This is a great opportunity to use some practicals, lights that are visible in the shot. They're a part of the scene. Some of my favorites are headlamps and car headlights, maybe a campfire, a light in a tent or a light coming from a window. If your lights have a warm color temperature, then they'll contrast really nicely with that blue ambience. They pop right off of the background and create a really cool complementary color scheme with a ton of color contrast. You can also add your own like film lights to add a bit of interest. This is where my Loom Cube panels come in. Usually I'll stick one inside of a car or a tent to make it pop out of the scene and have a nice warm glow. I'll say it again, the cheat code is blue hour with warm practical lights. Watch any movie and you will find a scene that's shot during blue hour and has warm practical lights and it will look Amazing. All right, I feel much better now, but before we close this video out, I actually wanna talk a little bit about editing because blue hour footage is a little bit tricky to edit. You can mess it up pretty easily. So let's talk about some ways to not do that. The most important thing is to be careful with the exposure and with the blue. You can mess those up really easily. Make the shot a little too bright or shift the hue or the saturation of the blues a little too far and the whole thing falls apart. Once again, blue hour footage is pretty dark, so the footage can come out a little noisy a lot of the time. So you wanna be careful grading it so you don't bring out any nasty artifacts during the grade. So I'll usually try and stay away from the more selective grading tools like the hue curves or HSL secondary and stick to the more broad adjustments like white balance and the color wheels. And finally, I'll hit most of my blue hour footage with a plugin called Neat Video to remove the noise. I cannot recommend this plugin enough for blue hour or honestly just any low light footage, any grainy footage. It's a great plugin for getting rid of noise and grain, works better than anything else I've ever used and it's pretty affordable as well. That's all I have for you in this video. I hope you enjoyed it, learned something new from it. And if you did, make sure to subscribe to Adorama TV for more videos just like this one. And if you're feeling crazy and wanna see some more of my work as well, you can even subscribe to me. Just throwing it out there. I'll be back with another one of these before you know it, but until then, go out there, get some cool blue hour footage. And remember, plan ahead, but don't forget to have a fun time with it. And remember those four words, blue hour, warm practicals. Thank me later. <laughs>